Hello, I'm Bill Davis, the servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, and sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 tells us what the gospel is, how that Jesus died by our sins, he was buried, he rose again the third day according to the scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised. The word is neither even in your heart nor in your mouth is the word of faith, which I preach, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Everyone that believe it to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone throughout the world, wherever you may be, receiving this broadcast. This is, I'm Doyle Davidson, and this is Terry Brown. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Doyle. And how are you? I'm well, thank you. You're well. Glad to be here. Thank you. We have an interesting program today, real interesting. I'm going to share with you about my days in Argyle, Texas, and Carrollton. Four years in Argyle, one year in Carrollton, 1972 through until 1975. Amen. Thank God. Amen. That's not going to work. How about 72 to 77? That'll get it better. Amen. I would ask Terry to read to us the book of Luke, chapter 4. First, let me say, I was born again when I was a small boy, and I was baptized in the Holy Spirit in 1974, 70, pardon me, July 24. Spoke in other tongues at midnight. Amen. And went into the ministry full time in 1980. But from 1972 until 1977, God put me in a place by spirit to be tempted of the devil. Those were the most uh, most precious years, frankly. Difficult. Uh, correction was frequent. Difficult. There's where I learned that God would rebuke a servant. He'd also scourge a servant. It was amazing. Chastisement was frequent. Correction. And if you have the right heart, you can take it. If not, you can't. But God wouldn't put you there unless you could take it. So, Jesus is my example. And Terry's going to read Luke chapter 4, where Jesus, after he came out of the River Jordan, having been baptized in water and then the Holy Ghost, he was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights. Turn. Luke chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. 
And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Amen. Now, I'm not going to um, teach or comment on these three temptations, but there, there were a lot of temptations but three major ones. And uh, this will happen to anybody. It happened to me. Uh, also, I would comment at least the third one, and I think all or two of them uh, were visions. They may have all been visions. I've not been able to see these scriptures for more than six years. Uh, but my eyesight is improving. My soul is coming out of captivity. And thank God for that. But uh, during those four years in Argyle, that's a city located in Denton County, just west of Collin, where, where we're at, west and adjacent to it. I spent four years there and it was a great blessing, a great blessing. There God taught me to pray, taught me how to pray. Uh, I was a veterinarian. I was raised in John Wesley Methodist doctrine. I was not a theologian. I'd never been to seminary. I was only a person that could read, and I could read about anything I did not understand, nor did I speak Hebrew or Greek, but I had Hebrew and Greek concordances, also had the interlinear uh, Bible, uh, both he Hebrew and Greek. And, uh, you know, if you, I've had, well, I happen to have a lot of education before. <clears throat> Six years at university level before I started obeying God. <clears throat> it didn't happen to be in religion. It happened to be in veterinary medicine. But, God was instructing me, revealing his word to me, showing me what was in my heart, showing me whether I would keep his commandments, uh, humbling me, proving me and whether I would obey him or not. Four years in Argyle, at one location where I lived, they were hard, they were difficult. They were trying of my soul, trying 
and by heart. Developing my faith. Developing my love. I never met a person that went, that never went through what I did. I've never met them. A lot of people have gone through things because they were not wise. They would not have had to go. But mine was led by the Spirit, ordained. My steps were ordered in God's words to train me. Uh, <clears throat> during that time, God taught me how to pray. I also want to mention one year in Carrollton, 76 to 77, and I didn't get out of Argyle and Carrollton trying by faith and by love until uh, April of 77. It was most blessed. There, as I stated, I learned to pray. So I would like for Terry to lead, to teach, read, I'll get it right. <laughs> Maybe lead, teach, and read. How's that? Amen. From the book of Colossians, I learned to pray every kind of prayer that I could possibly pray. During the last year in Argo, and then uh, lesser in Carrollton, to a lesser degree, I prayed what Terry is going to read, and I'm going to show you how the Lord led me uh, and put this prayer together for me for me and for you. When the Lord leads you to pray, and if, if he leads you in this manner, and I'm sure sometime he will, be encouraged. Because you're coming to a very important place in your walk to being victorious in everything you set your hand to do. So, Terry, if you'd read from Colossians. Uh, could we read this passage and then go back and read just those two verses? Sure. All right, starting in verse 9. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, <coughs> being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Thank you. And uh, that was well that you read that previous, the earlier part. I uh, probably have forgotten a lot, and I brought remember best my final ways of praying. And last night I was praying and they started coming out and I thought, oh, what a joy this is. But I prayed for hours, hours of prayer. I, I would like you to go to... Um, uh, Revelation 5, uh, where it talks about that God has redeemed us <clears throat> unto God and made us 
kings and priests God. under our God. Right. All right. Revelation 5, verses 9 and 10. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Thank you. I want to point something out. Redemption is not an act that stands alone. Redemption is an act of from something to something. From the authority of Satan to God. See, people talk about I'm redeemed. Well, to what? I had a good friend, her brother was an admiral <clears throat> in the Navy. <clears throat> in a war, some, of, some religionists came up to her and said, Are you saved? And Joni said, uh, From what? To what? The person didn't know what to say. See, you're not saved just to be saved. You're saved to be brought to God. And redemption is part of the salvation process. So, redeemed under God so we can be kings and priests. Now, if you turn to Second Timothy 2, I think verse 12 and 13, let's see what we find there. Amen. Uh, if we suffer, that verse? That's it, okay. right there. Verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Right. So remember this. Uh, I don't even mind if you take some notes. Uh, but if we suffer, suffering is being tempted. And if we endure the temptation, we'll reign with him. So I'm going to be praying a prayer that I know God gave me back in Argyle. And I'm going to post this most certainly. Uh, perhaps on a clip, we'll see. But here I prayed for hours, many hours. And I ended up where I'm at today. Thank God. So, Father, I thank you that I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus from all of the authority of the devil and translated into the kingdom of your dear Son and have been made a king and a priest and a, by God, Jehovah, and I reign in this life through one Christ Jesus. That one did a lot for me. I will tell you something else. Second Corinthians five twenty one. Let's look at that. Amen. This is all going to be well documented. You won't lose it. But this was a major uh, step in my getting out of Argyle. Out of the wilderness. Nothing wrong with Argyle. Great city. God could make a wilderness in the middle of the biggest <clears throat> city in the world. Is it 21? Second Corinthians 5, 21. Right. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Right. You see, friends, sin's your problem. Sin is your problem, without a doubt. And that 21st verse 
that, by the way, this all took place on the cross, uh, on, the, uh, on the cross, on the tree where Jesus was crucified. All of it there, the gospel. This took place on the tree, Mount Calvary. You can see it sitting in the garden too. And it's just right, well, it was to my right. Tombs there, Calvary's there. So, I'm going to pray again. Thank you. I've been redeemed. Notice I left out the Father. You can do that. I'm not telling you you need to pray this way. I'm telling you this is a way that I prayed and it was victorious. The final stages. And if you get a, a, a final stages of victory, if you get a revelation <clears throat> of what I'm teaching you and what I'm praying for you, Watch your victory come quick. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus from all of the authority of the devil and translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son and made a king and a priest unto my God, Jehovah. Thank God and thy brain in this life. Thank God through Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, by the all of the authority of Satan, and translated into the kingdom of his dear son, and made unto God a king and a priest, and I Blame in one through one Christ Jesus who died for me was buried rose again and when he was raised again thank God he having been made sin for me made an exchange that I be made the righteousness of God. That will work. You see, God will have to lead you. He's doing this right now. But you may be led to pray this. Thank God. On the cross, Jesus was made sin for me. And I might be made the righteousness of God. Through Christ Jesus. I prayed for people that have told me when I prayed for them those words, that prayer, that their whole torso, their abdomen, and their chest, thorax, would feel like it was dead, no life. And I continued to pray. And then my faith by the Spirit of God would bring forth a, a live feeling in their thorax and their abdomen. Why? Life, righteousness is alive and sin is death. Thank God. I think we'll pray one more and we'll see what Terry may want to say or have to say. I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus from all of the authority of the devil translated into the kingdom of God's dear son and made 
and a God, a king and a priest. Thank God as I blame through in this life to one Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for me. Amen. There are all kinds of prayers that will come through. Do you have anything to say to Well, I've heard you pray this many, 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 many times. Right. And often, you didn't today, but often we read it, you will pray uh, how you'll thank God that he's delivered us from the power of darkness or the authority of Satan and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. There you go. It's rare that you leave out that phrase, the forgiveness of sins, that's because true. that's necessary to be translated into the kingdom of his dear son. That's true. Very good. See, God wants you to talk. Well, I've just heard you pray that many times. You've prayed it for me right. many times. Uh, I've had that very experience you talked about where I just felt dead, almost sick, just my whole torso. Um, and you'd pray that and pray that and pray that and then go into that Second Corinthians 5 about Jesus becoming sin, taking my sin upon his body that I might be made the righteousness of God. And I remember specifically one time feeling not sick, like sick at my stomach. It's almost hard to describe, but just a sickness in my whole being. And then you were praying that, and uh, I'm sure it was in a deeper revelation of my sin being put on Jesus. It was almost overwhelming, like, no, that's not fair, you know. <laughs> it's not right. fair that my sin was put on him. But <clears throat> you continued praying and praying this Colossians 1, 13 and 14, and you prayed this over and over, and there started coming inside of me a peace. And this peace began to just fill up my my body. I mean, it's like a physical thing. We're not talking about feelings, uh, nor are we talking about symptoms of a, an illness, but it's, it's the, uh, the condition of my soul, I guess you could say, of your soul that causes these, um, these sensations. Um, but you continue to pray, and there came a peace. And you refer to this many times, but Isaiah 32 talks about the work of righteousness being peace. Right. And uh, the effect of righteousness, quietness, quietness, and assurance forever. Amen. But when uh, there's oftentimes a great turmoil in prayer, when you're praying for me because you're, you're driving out things out of me, <clears throat> And there'll be a turmoil. And you can feel this on your own. I've felt it on my own before. When you're in a turmoil and you're wrestling <clears throat> with the devil or wrestling, you know, you're in a struggle with things in your life, things in your heart, you, um, your thoughts, your will, your emotions. You're wrestling with that. And um, you can take these prayers and pray these prayers and keep praying them. Keep praying them and keep praying them and keep praying them. You can turn on our worship. You can turn on Doyle's teachings or, you know, things off of YouTube and turn them down low. Doyle has taught us this ever since I came here 29 years ago. Turn, turn that on because there's anointing on the worship, on the teaching, on Doyle's prayers. You can turn it on and just turn it down low. You don't necessarily have to have it loud where the words are competing with your prayers just turn it low and that anointing will be there and you mix your faith with that anointing pray these prayers praying the word of god and keep praying it keep praying it and keep praying it and keep praying it and when you feel some peace begin to settle in your heart in your soul you'll you'll feel this peace and I've had times it would take two or three days before I could, because of what I was <laughs> wrestling with, some uh, turmoil or tor torment, a struggle, whatever it is. 
But don't stop. Just keep praying it because it will work. It, you might get some peace in 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes or an hour. But if you don't get it in one hour, don't quit. Just keep praying it. And it will come. It will. It will come because you're praying the, the Word of God, the, the truth, and, and it will manifest in your heart. It will manifest right through. What did we read a couple of weeks ago? Isaiah, not Isaiah, Psalms uh, 68. If I regard the iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Right. And we talked about that verse the morning before that show, and I don't believe that I shared this, but I'll share this now. Do you, those verses used to seem like a riddle to me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me, but verily God had, hath heard me, hath attended my prayer. Well, I wasn't understanding those verses, and I was thinking, well, he won't hear me, but he does hear me. He won't hear me, but he does. It was like a riddle. But it says, if you regard the iniquity in your heart, he won't hear you. That's right. But verily God, he hath heard me, hath attended to my prayer. When does he hear you? When you pray the truth, the word of God. Don't consider the iniquity. Don't consider your struggle. Don't consider your hurt, your torment, your sin. Don't consider that. Consider what you're praying, and that's when God attends to your prayer. And that righteousness will work in your heart, and you'll get peace. You'll get quietness. You'll get assurance. That's how you pray these things through. Pray things through out of your soul or pray through things where you need victory. Any situation. Amen. I have to share something with you that I'm not sure I've ever shared it. But when I first started this ministry, God started it here in Plano. I had all kinds of opposition. The devil wanted to stop me, shut me down, run me out of town, and, and he surrounded me with people, wicked unbelievers. Uh, we started in 83, September, taking word of base satellite. And then uh, God directed me to do it. On that satellite, from 83, to March 86, two people were anointed, had some anointing. One, Norval Hayes. Two, R.W. Shambo. Rest of them should have stayed home. <laughs> Amen. And sometime, I don't know, probably 85, I was in a real battle. Uh, not, say, 84. Oh, definitely. I was in a real battle. And I took eight hours, eight hours of Hayes and Schambach or one or the other and played them on a television in one of my rooms here where the nursery's at now. And I don't recommend this. Let God recommend it. But I had a couch in there. And I laid down on that couch. And I listened to eight hours of their teaching. I was after the anointing, not what they taught. Nothing but the anointing. And no, I didn't stay eight continuously, uh, or continually. I got up and did something for a minute or two. But I'll tell you what, at the end of eight hours, what whoever it was, I've already said, that anointing mixed with my faith. I broke through. I started laughing. <laughs> that 
was the one of the most, I guess, major victories of this ministry. But I was determined, believing that their anointing, their faith, and mine would put me over the top. Romans 10, uh, Romans 1 10. Mutual faith, a boat. Guess what? It worked. Now, God led me to do it. Oh, it felt good. About two days. <laughs> you had to do it again. <laughs> right. Kept fighting. Kept fighting. What time is it? 11.36. Uh, Amen. You referred to this, but Hebrews 4.2, or you referred to using your faith, but Hebrews 4.2 says, Unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, talking about the Jews in the wilderness. Right. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And the distinction between naming and claiming versus praying scriptures is using your faith and believing the truth, believing the word of God. But you have to take your faith and mix your faith. All these scriptures that we read previously, Colossians 1 and 2 Corinthians 5, all those, uh, and this whole prayer is the gospel. It's what's accomplished for us in the gospel. So you don't just rattle these off with your mouth, but you take your faith and mix your faith with the gospel, and it will profit you. Terry is speaking as a prophetess right there. Understand that, folks. I have three women that are prophetesses that sit up here weekly. Terry, Kathy Davidson, and Kathy By. And when they speak these words, they speak as prophetesses. Just like Deborah spoke. Just like Huldah spoke. So you people that think women can't speak uh, but keep silence in the church, you hope they do. And most of them should. And the whole reference in Corinthians is don't be asking silly questions. But these three women, anointed of God as prophetesses, speak as prophetesses any word that God wants to speak through them. Uh, and that's not teaching. That's speaking the word of God, anointed word of God to the hearts of men and women throughout the world. I believe God, well, I know he did. When you were speaking, that came up, tell them why these women can do this. And I just did. Amen. All right? Amen. Now, what shall we do? You finished? Yes. I want to pray, and then we're going to minister some songs. I have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus from all of the authority of the devil. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus from all of the power of Satan. I've been translated into the kingdom of God's Dear Son, through redemption by the blood of Jesus, even forgiveness of sin, I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus from all of the power of Satan and translate into the kingdom of God's dear Son, even the forgiveness of sin. And I've been made unto God 
a king and a priest under Jehovah, my God. And I reign and rule in this life through what Christ Jesus, who died for me, was buried and rose again the third day. Joel? Yes. I've got something I'd like to share. Good, come on. Um, about reigning and ruling. Right. Uh, reigning and ruling through the gospel doesn't mean that you go do what you want to do, wherever you want to do it. It doesn't mean when you're put into a situation that you go dominate and control and get it your way. Reigning and ruling through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ means that the spirit of Jesus in you, the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that spirit in you will rule the wickedness of the situation. It will rule wicked spirits and push them back, put them off so that you can triumph and you can walk in the path God wants you to walk in and obtain the victory that he wants you to obtain. Now, I have a very specific experience with this. A few years ago, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit general about the particular situation. Amen. Because I believe that's right. Right. But there was a situation that certain members of my family were put into. And uh, the way this situation came about, there was some very oppressive wickedness the way certain things were being handled for this person's life. It was, it was just wicked. It was <laughs> pushing in an oppressive, a very oppressive and destructive manner to cause much harm and hurt. And um, we were, there were certain reasons that we could not do what we wanted to do. Well, I'll just say we were subject to some court restrictions. I will say that. Because um, you have to abide by what the court says. But uh, the situation caused some great distress, some, some rulings from this judge. And um, I told the people involved in my family, I said, the only way we will get through this is believe in the gospel. Believe in Jesus died and was buried and rose again for us. And we, we were greatly uh, distressed. It was a hurtful, a very hurtful sit situation. Probably the biggest hurtful situation of my life that I've faced. And, um, but I was determined to believe this gospel. And a few days went by, and we were praying in the fellowship hall one day, and God told me something to tell my family member, a way to handle a particular situation that was causing great distress. Amen. And so... They went and followed the directions that I gave them, and within two, three days, the situation absolutely turned around from going one way in a very oppressive, distressful manner, completely turned. The person that it was involved with completely changed, said, no, it will be all right if we do this way. And uh, I just don't believe it's right to tell all the details of this, but know that it was a very uh, serious life-changing situation and greatly distressful. And it went, and I saw it, the revelation that came to me about ruling and reigning through the gospel it was like nothing I'd ever seen before because we had no ability of our own to change the situation because it was a court order. And we saw this gospel take this person and agree and say, we don't have to go by the court order. We can agree that we will do things this way. And 
and the wickedness that, of the spirit that was trying to, to bring about hurt and despair, distress, was completely pushed off and put away, and things were worked out in, in a manner that just worked really well. And, and I saw from that it was not because of anything we could do on our own, but the gospel in us, this, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, pushed back that wicked spirit, pushed it back, pushed it off, and overcame it, put it down where it could not rule this situation. And, and it was all right. It was uh, acceptable that if two parties agreed, they didn't have to go by this court order. But uh, it was the gospel that pushed that wickedness back and put it down so that it, we came through just in a very easy, um, easy manner, and it put off all of the distress, and we were able to come through just in a great victory the way we would have chosen for it to work out. But that was the gospel ruled. It ruled the wickedness, the wicked spirits. And that's what rules. Not your way, not what you want. But you rule the wicked spirits, the wickedness of the situation through the gospel. Amen. Thank God. Well, a great blessing. I have to know something about all this. As you related it to me. Amen. I think uh, it's probably a good time to do a song, would you say? Yes. Terry Brown is going to do one of my favorites. You don't minister anything but my favorites here. You said, what are your favorites? What the Spirit of God tells me to do. That's what. Whatever God tells me to minister, that's what ministers in this, through this ministry by the ministers in song and word. Thank God. I appreciate what God has done with Water of Life, what he's brought about, especially since 2009. I need to say one thing right now. God took Terry Mai out in old night and took him to heaven. God left what he wanted of Terry Byers ministry with me. And that was 12 songs recorded. 11 of them are really anointed. One of them, not so much, but it has a place down ahead of us, especially on short wave. And we will play that uh, minister that or let Terry uh, minister that, Terry my uh, when it's right time. But I know this probably sounds hard. Did you know I don't need Terry my with me anymore? God gave me what he needed for me to have and that was his anointed songs. So these songs are all anointed Terry Brown's going to do one day at a time. Terry? I want to say oh, go ahead. I want to make one comment about what you just said. People would say, well, that sounds hard. Actually, what that is is that you humbling yourself to the will of God. All right. I'm only human I'm just a woman Help me believe in what I can be And all that I am Show me the stairway One day at a time One day at a time Sweet Jesus That's all I'm asking from you Give me the 
among men Jesus you know when you're looking below it's worse now than then cheating and stealing violence and crime Lord for my sake teach me to take one day at a time One day at a time Sweet Jesus That's all I'm asking from you Give me the strength To do every day What I have to do Show me the way one day at a time One day at a time Sweet Jesus That's all I'm asking from you Just give me the strength To do every day what you have me do with recorded songs of Terry By and one of my boys.
God bless you. See you tomorrow. This is Donald Davidson, Plano, Texas. Good day. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.